Tonight, is integration necessary? Many Southerners think no. Also, BC topics. What are those? This reporter has no idea. A four or higher on the AP is required for college credit. Statistics show that only 50% of students reach this mark. Sorry, ladies. Looks like you'll be taking Calc 1 in college. This is the Calculus Report. Today is June 3 fifths from Color Studios in New York. This is the Calculus Report. Welcome to the report, everyone. Glad you could be here. A special thanks to our sponsor, Taco Bell. Taco Bell. I know you and your bells will never forget. Tonight, my partner and I will be guiding you through the basic principles of calculus. Now, I know you may think you have already learned these, but don't let that teacher fool you. By the time we're done with you, you'll love calc. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean calc. I was just working on my kitchen floor. We'll also have a special report from our very own Alex Romanowski, or as he goes by, Rude. You may know him from his coverage of the X Hamster Games. Let's begin. We'll start with the origins of calculus, Riemann sums. Now, I know some of you struggled with this, and I understand that rees are sometimes hard to deal with. Basically, you just add the areas of a bunch of rectangles under a curve. There are a lot of different kinds of rees. Left Riemann sums, right Riemann sums, and even midpoint Riemann sums. It helps to know the difference, but I'm sure you bright scholars will have no trouble with that. Now that we've taught you that incredibly complicated topic, Let's talk about what Riemann sums actually mean. For example, let's look at a particular problem, the integral of x squared. Here's an image of the right Riemann sum of this problem. The rectangles represent an approximation of the area under the curve. The swirly thing means the area between two x values of a curve. Basically, just integrate. And dx? Well, we weren't so sure, so this is what the internet told us. Yeah, looks about right. It really does. The AP would have been way easier if Mrs. Costaldo let us watch wrestling. Those guys are geniuses. How about we do an example so these kids can actually learn something? Let's try the integration of x. When integrating, you just add 1 to the exponent of the integrand, and then divide the entire thing by the new exponent. So the integral of x is x squared over 2, plus the constant. Also, if the problem has to integrate in a range of values, simply take the difference of the solutions with the limits as x values. So, if we were asked to value the integration of x between negative 1 and 1, we would plug in these numbers into the solution and take the difference. And what's our final answer, Corey? 1? I'm sorry, Corey. No. The answer is 2 halves. Wait, what? Now that we've taught you the basics, let's go to our field reporter, Alex, to see how some of our classmates feel about integration. Ever since the case of Brownview Board of Education, Integration has been a hot topic in the U.S. of A. In this ever-changing world we live in, students need to be exposed to this crucial idea for it can be used in everyday life. We interviewed a random group of passersby to learn their views on this important issue. Our first interview takes place on the intersection of Hooper and Watson, where we met a fine, young, ethnic gentleman. Sir? 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 Yo. Yo. Yo, what do you want? Uh, can I take a moment of your time, please, for an interview, sir? Yeah, sure. Whatever, Step with man. me. Our camera's over here. Watch the cord. So, uh, how do you feel about integration? Uh, yeah, I guess I support that. Support it? I guess that means you agree that integration is a good topic to teach in AP Calculus. Have you ever taken that class? Yeah, I think so. I just remember skipping class every Friday, telling my teachers for religious reasons or something. I don't remember any, learning anything about integration, though. That was more of like a social studies topic or something. Social studies? I'm assuming you talked about the history of integration in that class. Who would you say your heroes are in the field of integration? I really admire the work of Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X. They're both visionaries of integration. I've always thought of Newton and Leibniz as leaders of integration, but we'll agree to disagree. How do you deal with this topic? I mean, integration has always been kind of difficult for me. My peers don't always treat me as an equal. Personally, I don't agree with integration. I think it'd be a huge waste of time, and I think many people agree with me. In order to prove this bold accusation, I travel to the heartland of our country to ask a well-informed citizen. I'll be conducting my next interview in a shed in Stewart's Trailer Park in what appears to be one of the biggest meth labs in the southern tier. Now, I've asked many other people on their opinion on integration. How do you feel about it, sir? I hate integration. I, I don't like it. It's the most pointless thing I ever heard about in my entire life. Well, that sure is a pretty harsh statement there. 
Maybe you just never tried it. No, I've seen those kinds of people before, and I ain't wanting them near me. This is America. We speak American. By those people, do you mean mathematicians? Math magician? What in the Sam Hacks a math magician? Boy, get off my property. I've made a huge mistake. My venture into the tense world of integration yielded mixed results. Everyone else in the trailer park seemed to agree with the fine young gentleman I interviewed. It's safe to say that most Americans are firmly against integration. And it's in this reporter's opinion that we should go back to the way it was before Isaac Newton integrated this country. It seems for now, though, teaching integration to America's youth will be a slow and painful process. Wait, wait, come back! I have more questions! Come on! Thanks for that enlightening segment, Alex. We'll see you next time with a special report on slope fields. Sounds like a fiery topic there, Corey. Moving on. Now, I know many of you can integrate, but some ladies out there struggle with the process of deriving. It's not difficult in the slightest. But for some reason, ladies just can't derive without crashing and burning. I've also noticed that older people tend to derive slower than the rest of us. I guess their minds just can't handle the complicated steps. As you can see, we're both handsome young men who can derive with perfection, probably even with our eyes closed. So we made a list to help steer you ladies in the right direction. When deriving, always keep your eyes on the road ahead. Never text and derive. You'll be too distracted to do both. And remember, if you drink, always pick a designated deriver. Moving on to a more sensitive topic, let's talk about sex. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm being told that it's the integration of e to the x. Either way, this one really arouses my attention. And believe it or not, it's not that hard. That's what she said. That she did. But basically, the integration of e to the x is just e to the x. We didn't need a teacher for that one. Yeah, I agree. Mr. Peregrine taught us enough about the integration of e to the x. For those of you that struggle with this topic, he said that the only safe integration of e to the x is not to integrate at all. Wise words from a wise man. Now, we could teach you some more rules that involve e, but that would just be a major waste of time. You'll never use that again. Even if Mrs. Costello insists that you'll need it to study the humanities. Instead, let's talk about another integration rule. Another dead end you may come to in integrating is the integration of 1 over x. Some of the more quick-tempered of you may give up and drop the class. Let's just say this problem is a real bear. Now class, don't overreact to simple questions like you usually do. This one's easy. The integration of 1 over x is equal to the natural log of x. For those of you who have forgotten what a natural log looks like, here it is. Okay, that is the wrong image. Jimmy, please put up the correct image of a natural log. Alright, one more time, a natural log. Finally, a natural log I'm okay with. Let's try an example. This particular problem isn't hard. All you need to do is use u substitution. First, set u equal to the natural log of x. In this case, du will equal 1 over x dx. It's like magic. Plug both of those up in there and you get the integration of u. Your final answer will be u squared over 2, or ln squared of x over 2. U substitution is easy. I just get really nervous when doing these problems, because one mistake will cost you at least 12 points. It's a fear we all have to deal with. Any little boner will destroy your average. It's especially embarrassing when I go up to the board and it happens. None of us enjoy it either. Now our time is almost up, so let's move on to the interview segment of our show. This interview is brought to you by the charity group, Building Our Cities Extra Safe. It's a great charity. You should really donate. He's the author of the best-selling book, Calculus for Dummies. Please welcome to the program, Martin Castellato. Hey there, Martin. How's it going? Great. Glad you'd be here. Thanks for having me. Sure. Now let's talk about the book. It's a New York Times bestseller. And you are quoted as saying, this book can teach anyone the basic principles of calculus. That's right. It took me almost six days to write this book. So I'm really happy it's finally finished out there for everyone who needs it. You know, I do know about 20 students that need it pretty badly right now. Mm -hmm. Were you ever scrutinized for the topic of this book? Actually, yes, I was. Some people told me that any semi-informed person with an internet connection could teach calculus. I knew better. This book will help a lot 
will help kids of all ages learn one of the most important subjects of all time without having to take an annoying class. Well, as they say in some urban areas, haters gonna hate. I hope I got that accent right. Now, the book claims that calculus is for dummies. How dumb exactly do you have to be not to understand calculus? Well, according to my opinion, if you can wet your whistle, you can calculus. If you can walk your snake, you can calculus. If you can lose your lunch, you can calculus. If you can hook your worm, you can definitely calculus. If you can grate the cheese, you can calculus. <laughs> if you oh, alright, alright, you know what? I get it. Basically, if you can live and breathe, you can calculus. Now, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you were able to ignore the critics and finally get this book out there. Now, Thank that's you. all the time we have. Thanks for joining us, Martin. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Once again. The book is Calculus for Dummies. It's in stores now near you. And to check it out online, go to bookhub.com. Keller? That's our show. Here it is. Your moment of sense.